Welcome once again in this session we are diving into 1 Peter chapter 2. Putting away therefore all wickedness, all deceit, hypocrisies, envies, and all evil speaking. I've got to stop right there because just in the sentence before, the apostle Peter said this is the gospel. And then he says something as good as this. Now, don't forget that in the original manuscripts, when Peter actually penned this letter, he didn't have chapters or verses. They added the chapters and verses way later. He penned it as just a letter as anybody else would write a letter. Later on, other people divided it up into verses and chapters. So Peter just said, this is the gospel. And then he said, therefore... Put away all wickedness, all deceit, hypocrisies. Wow, the church today is just plagued with wickedness, deceit, and hypocrisies. I'm not talking about any of the other points that the Apostle Peter mentioned, but even just those three. Because now, the modern gospel is like, well, just accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Just say a prayer, and you're good, okay? I mean, you can... You can, you can keep on sinning. Just don't tell anybody. You can just, you can keep on sinning. Just God won't see your sin. He'll see the righteousness of Christ. That is absolutely, I mean, that is evil. That is evil. That is wrong. That is not what the Lord taught. That is not what the prophets taught. That is not what any of the 12 disciples taught. That in itself is deceit. When you Except Jesus, when you really come to faith, you should simultaneously put away all wickedness, all deceit, and all hypocrisies, envies, and all evil speaking. That term evil speaking reminds me of William Seymour, one of the fathers of the Pentecostal tongue-talking movement. Consider who he was, okay? William Seymour, the leader of the Azusa Street Revival, one of the leaders, the fathers of the Pentecostal tongue-talking movement, more or less the father of Pentecostalism. He, he said, if you backbite, if you speak evil, if you gossip, he said, I, it doesn't matter how many tongues you talk in, you do not have the Holy Spirit. As newborn babies long for the pure spiritual milk, that with it you may grow, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is gracious. Come to him, a living stone, rejected indeed by men, but chosen by God, precious. Now that goes in line with what Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, where the wisdom of God is foolishness to men. The wisdom of men is foolishness to God. The strength of men is weakness to God. But the weakness of men is strength to God. It's like we got opposites here. Like Jesus himself said, if men love you, then you're in a bad spot. Woe to you when all men love you. Woe to you when all men speak well of you. You also as living stones are built up as a spiritual house. Peter is likening people to stones or like bricks that build up into a house. To be a holy priesthood, again, Peter emphasizes holiness. A holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ because it is contained in Scripture. Behold, I lay in Sion, a chief cornerstone, speaking of Jesus, of course, chosen and precious, he who believes in him will not be disappointed. And that is found in Isaiah chapter 28, verse 16. For you who believe, therefore, is the honor. But for those who are disobedient, notice here, we got juxtaposed to believe the disobedient. Okay, so we got the disobedient and the opposite of the disobedient are the ones who believe. And likewise, the opposite of those who believe are those who are disobedient. In the original Greek manuscripts, the word for believe is synonymous with obedience. And so you can't say that you believe God if you don't obey God. For those who believe, therefore, is the honor. But for those who are disobedient, the stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. Again, talking about Jesus being the stone that the builders rejected, and he has become the chief cornerstone. And that is found in Psalm 118.22 and a stumbling stone and a rock of offense. And that is found in Isaiah chapter 8, verse 14. Reading on, 
For they stumble at the word, being disobedient, to which also they are appointed. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for God's own possession, that you may proclaim the excellence of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. The King James Version says, But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people. Take note of that. A chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, and a peculiar people. A lot of people today who call themselves Christians are far from a peculiar people. You can't even tell the difference between them and a worldly person. They dress the same, they look the same, the same kind of clothes, the same kind of hair, the same walk, the same talk. They go to the same movies, they listen to the same music. They are far from what they are supposed to be. Verse 10, in the past you were not a people, but now are God's people who had not obtained mercy but now have obtained mercy. Just as it says in the scriptures, you have called the things that are not as though they were. They used to be not a people, but now they are a people. Do understand that in the scriptures, if you are not truly born again, if you are not truly saved and part of God's people, you're not even considered to be people. You're more or less an unclean animal according to the scriptures. That's why in the book of Acts, when Peter had the vision of the sheep being lowered down and all these unclean animals on it, God said, kill and eat. And, and Peter said, no way can I do that. Notice if Jesus really taught that you can eat unclean things, then Peter would have known it, okay? But he obviously Jesus didn't teach that because Peter totally refused to do that. So what God was showing Peter is that these unclean animals, these Gentiles, these people who are not saved, these people who are not born again, these people who are not the children of God, but the children of the devil, just as Jesus told a whole group of people in John chapter 8, they were children of the devil. These people who are unclean animals, God will cleanse. He will save them. Those who were not a people, i.e. unclean animals, will become a people, i.e. clean men of God. And Peter made this clear in Acts chapter 10, verse 28, referring to the vision that he had. He said, God showed me not to call any man unclean whom he has made clean. So that's what it means when it says you were not a people, but now you are a people. Verse 11, beloved, I beg you as foreigners and pilgrims to abstain from fleshly lusts, which war against the soul, having good behavior among the nations. So in that of which they speak against you as evildoers, they may see your good works and glorify God in the day of visitation. Therefore, subject yourselves to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake, whether to the king as supreme or to governors as sent by him for vengeance on evildoers and for praise to those who do well. For this is the will of God, that by well-doing you should put to silence the ignorance of foolish men. Live as free people, yet not using your freedom for a cloak of wickedness, but as bond servants of God, slaves of God. Verse 17, honor all men, love the brotherhood, fear God, honor the king. Servants, be in subjection to your masters with all respect, not only to the good and gentle, but also to the wicked. For it is commendable if someone endures pain, suffering unjustly because of conscience toward God. For what glory is it if, when you sin, you patiently endure beating? But if, when you do well, you patiently endure suffering, this is commendable with God. For you were called to this because Christ also suffered for us, leaving you an example that you should follow his steps. Who didn't sin, neither was deceit found in his mouth. That is found in Isaiah chapter 53, verse 9. When he was cursed, he didn't curse back. When he suffered, he didn't threaten, but committed himself to him who judges righteously. He himself bore our sins in his body on the tree, that we, having died to sins, did you catch that? Having died to sins. Not that Jesus died for us so that we could go free and sin all we want. No, we died with him. Galatians 2.20. Any pastor, 
priest, bishop, whoever, who gives you the idea that you can keep on sinning just because Christ died for your sins is a heretic and a liar. Verse 24 again, he himself bore our sins in his body on the tree that we, having died to sins, might live to righteousness. You were healed by his wounds, for you were going astray like sheep, but now you have returned to the shepherd and overseer of your souls. Until next time, seek God with all your heart, and if you do, you will find him. Call upon him, and he will show you great and mighty things. Love you guys.